this is a basic probability sum and it's a three set Venn diagram. Now remember, usually in a three set Venn diagram, the sum that we have is number of items in a set, but instant we have uh, probabilities given over here. So let's read the question. The Venn diagram below shows the probabilities of customers having various combinations of a starter, main course, or dessert at Polly's restaurant. So we have some sort of a context over here, and uh, there is some restaurant, it's Polly's restaurant, and we have three probabilities, three probability that an event will take place. One of it, that a person uh, who goes to Polly's restaurant would order a starter, that means, you know, what you eat before you eat. And then there's the main course, and then there's the desert. And we have every circle represent the probability for each of them. So that's some sort of a context that they have. Now, what we have to do is remember that S and D, that means the starter and the desert, they're independent. So what that means uh, is that probability of S multiplied by probability of D is equal to probability of S intersection D. So that is what meant by uh, statistically independent. So that's the information that we have. So the first question we have is to find the unknown probability P. Now, we can do this using this rule. First of all, let's write down the probability of S intersection D. And that probability is given by this region over here. S intersection D and this is 0 0.04 plus 0 0.10 and that turns out to be 0.14. Now let's find out the probability of S. So the probability of S would be this entire circle. So let's add up. So 0 0.04 plus 0 0.10 is 0 0.14 plus 0.17 and that is 0.31. And plus, we have this unknown probability P. So that is the probability of S. Now, the probability of D. So the probability of D is this circle. Let me use another color over here. This circle over here. And the probability of S is this circle over here. So let's find the probability of D. So the probability of D is 0.35. So let's use the rule of independent events. So probability of S, which is 0.31 plus P, multiplied by probability of D, which is 0.35, equals to S intersection D, which is 0.14. So therefore, 0.31 plus P equals to 0.14 divided by 0.35. So it turns out to be 0.14 divided by 0.35. It is 0.4, so we have 0.4, therefore P equals to 0.4 minus 0.31, and that is 0.09. So that is the probability of P. The next one is uh, find the value of Q, which is the probability Q. Now, in order to find that, so if we add up all the probabilities, if you take a look over here, if we add up all the probabilities, it turns out to be 1. So let's add it up. So probability of P, uh, probably, let's write, start with probability of S. This entire circle is S. So probability of S is 0 0.31 plus P. P is 0 0.09. So plus, so this circle is done. Now left over is this region. 0.06 plus 0.15 plus Q is unknown, plus this region outside the three sets is 0, equals to 1. The total probability is 1. So let's use the calculator and add it all up. So we have 0.31 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.15, and we get a total of 0 0.61. So Q plus 0 0.61 equals to 1. Therefore, Q equals to 1 minus 0.61. So we can get 1 minus 0.61. That is 0.39. The next question deals with conditional probability. Now, remember this particular rule. So what we have is that one event conditional another event is 
probability of the first event intersection the second event divided by probability of the second event, whatever the first event or the second event, whatever they are. So that's the logic behind it. So what we can do now is we can write uh, question number C1. So probability of D conditional M intersection S. So the first thing we know is we can write probability of the first event which is D intersection the second event which is M intersection S divided by the second event which is M intersection S. That's what we can write. Now we know the probability of M intersection S. So M intersection S is this one. This probability over here. Let me use a darker color. So this probability over here is M intersection S. And if we add up the two probabilities, 0.17 plus 0 0.10, the probability is 0.27. Now for the you know numerator D intersection M intersection S, for that we have to use the concept of shading three set Venn diagrams and D intersection, M intersection, uh, S is this region where everything intersects, which is 0 0.10. So this is going to be 0 0.10. So let's see what this turns out to be. So using our calculator, 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.27. And we have 0 0.3704. So 0 0.37 is good enough. The next one, number 2, C2, is a similar question. We have probability of the first event, which is again D, conditional M intersection S prime. So this is going to be probability of D intersection M intersection S prime divided by probability of M intersection S prime. Now, M intersection S prime means from M remove S. Remember, whenever we have intersection prime, so if this circle is M, this entire circle is M, uh, intersection S prime means the region from which S has been removed. That's the logic. So that region would be this, Q plus 0.15. So if you write this down, downstairs, Q is 0.39 plus 0.15. Okay. Now upstairs it is going to be D intersection M intersection S prime. That means from D intersection M, so D intersection M is this region. So D and M is this region over here. From D and M, if you remove S, whatever is left over, which is 0.15, that is going to be the probability. So 0.15. So let's calculate this. So using our calculator, downstairs would be 0.39 plus 0.15, that is downstairs, which is 0.54. So 0.15 divided by 0.54, the answer is 0.2777, so 0 0.278. 0.278, that's the probability. Now the final part is obviously going to be more challenging than the previous parts. And if you see, it's only two marks and you have so many things written. So one uh, rule of thumb is that try to take help from what you just did or, you know, the previous parts. That's a good idea. That's a good rule of thumb. So let's see what happens. Now, one evening, 63 customers. So we have 63 customers over here. Okay. Are booked into Polly's restaurant. Remember, we are still in Polly's restaurant. The restaurant belongs to Polly. So that's, that's for sure. And we have an office party. It doesn't matter whatever party it is. Polly has asked for their starter. Remember, there are three types of people. Uh, three types of people or three types of order. You know, we have starter, meaning what you order before you order. We have the main course, meaning what you order. And, of course, we have the dessert, what you order afterwards. So the question is, there are altogether 63 customers. We know there are 63 customers. Now, of the 63 customers, we have 27 customers who order main courses and a starter. What might this mean? So, main courses is M, 
and means intersection starter means s okay and then we have this information where we have main courses without starter so what this basically means is that we have main courses intersection s prime that's pretty interesting because what we just did was m intersection s conditional and m intersection s prime so maybe there is a link over here so and this 27 and 36 if you add it up we again get 63 so it's not a big deal they couldn't have you know it doesn't matter whether they write 63 or not 27 plus 36 would be 63 so now what we have estimate is that number of deserts uh, that these 63 customers will have so obviously what we are going to do is use the previous sum we know the probability someone orders dessert given that the person uh, has uh, main course intersection starter that probability is 0.37 which means 37 percent so if there are 27 people and out of those 27 people 37 percent of them or 0.37 of them orders dessert we'll know how many of the 27 people order dessert plus out of the 36 people we now know if you take a look at the second sum you know d conditional m intersection s prime which is this one so the probability is around 0.278 means 27.8 percent so if you multiply that by the probability which is 0.278 and if you add it up you would get the total number of people who ordered the dessert out of the 63 people so let's bring out the calculator and see how it works so this is going to be 27 multiplied by 0.37 plus 36 multiplied by 0.278 and it turns out to be 19.998 which is 20 people so there are altogether 20 people who ordered dessert out of the 63 people that they have mentioned.